Okay, hello and welcome back to Sonic TV. I'm Andrew Weir, and this is part two of the Blender 2.65 Beginners Tutorial Series, where we're going to be looking at trousers on Blender 2.65. So, we've already looked at a t shirt, and the whole series is going to get a little bit more advanced from this point. But uh, the, the actual trousers themselves that we're going to make now, it, the technique isn't too different to what we've already done. Uh, so, I don't know, just going through practicing it is probably the best thing, and I might mention a few things that you haven't seen before. And because we have literally just been through it before, I'm going to mention probably more stuff about what I like about character creation and how uh, to make it look more realistic. So it's probably a good one to watch, uh, although we are using the same techniques that we use for the t-shirt. And so we can see that this is the default character still, there's no t-shirt, uh, because I've started the scene again, and it's got a subdivision surface on there if you wanted to add it that. Um, but we're going to get into the trouser creation and again literally the same techniques so I'm going to select this ring loop here because that looks about the right height keep going down um, and in fact that might be a slow way at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the front view and wireframe with Z and circle select so scroll to change the size select the area you want I've obviously selected a bit too much there so I'm going to undo that select the area that you want which is down there and then use the middle mouse button to diselect any area that you don't want. And basically that's just sped up the whole thing. And what we're going to do is press Shift D again, just like we did before. P to separate. And find it. Select it. And just scale it with Alt S on the normals. Just enough to be no split above the skin. And this top uh, ring loop should probably be a little bit more straight for the trousers and basically the actual top of the trousers in here it's probably going to be covered by the t-shirt or you'd want to unless the t-shirt is tucked in you would probably want to put the t-shirt over this part to make it look a little bit more realistic uh, if you want a more casual character and obviously there's going to be a lot of folds in the end of the t-shirt which we looked at last time so kind of make them go in line with this and and by changing the shapes here, it's actually going to make the skin come through. So we're going to have to select them again and maybe just scale them up a little bit more. So that one needs scaling. Um, and I might yeah scale up a little bit more to make sure that there's nothing. And I think I will just go into wireframe and bring this area down. Um, because trousers are just a little bit more baggy that's on a on a uh, male character at least and we're gonna have uh, maybe female characters this might be okay to have the trousers this close to the skin but if we want a, a male character a little bit more casual and so on then you're gonna want more folds and less uh, less tight trousers um, so basically um, if we do look at trousers say our own trousers that you're probably wearing at the moment uh, there's loads more folds around this area than there are um, maybe in the thigh here and then there's a few more folds over here maybe quite big vertical folds and then just loads of folds down here is what I would do and basically some of them you don't need to make so for instance the folds around this area they could just be textured on give it a bump map give it a normal map whatever you want to make it look like it's got real folds in there um, and that will be just like a little bit better than actually modeling them in and when they see it from the front nobody's going to be paying attention that they're not actually 3D um, but it is noticeable from the side so basically you need to model some in just to break out the view uh, from, the, from the different views but actual folds, some of the more finer folds you would just put in the texture or just not have and basically so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did last time I'm going to delete the knee area here um, across there with X and the vertices and I'm also going to delete those two there just because I probably selected too far down and uh, in that area it's way too close. 
So this area here, I'm going to kind of keep extruding down. I should probably do a mirror modifier at this point because I don't want to do it to both of the legs. So let's see in wireframe if I can just um, delete a few of this side. And I'm going to delete the vertices again just so I get the exact half. And now I'm going to apply the modifier. Uh, I've got my center point up there, but it doesn't matter if it's up there as long as it's in the middle. So mirror, and there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude down. So extrude on z-axis. Maybe as far as you like. It doesn't really matter too much. I might just scale that so it's a little bit uh, more horizontal, uh, a little more straight. And I might just scale it up a little bit. And then when I extrude down again, I might only go to the knee, because we're going to have a lot of bending in the knee. I might scale it down, and then scale, and then extrude again. Uh, we're looking at it directly in front, so I'm going to grab that back. And keep going like this. And basically, This is going to be all there is to it until we get to this point where I'm going to scale it down again. And we might want to go in there and model it a little bit better than that if we don't think it looks quite right. And then what I'm going to do use is the bridge tool, which we talked about in another one of my videos. And if we apply the loop tools modifier, maybe search loop tools or look on my channel, uh, you'll find the loop tools and we will apply bridge which will bring them together and then a little bit more modeling to straighten that out from what it was just then and we should have it something that looks fairly okay I think I've messed it up a little bit there but we'll um, we'll straighten it out because it's kind of you want to look at it maybe in object mode occasionally and then see what you need to change and just do a little bit of trial and error with the uh, the actual shape. But if, if you're going for an art style, this could actually be okay for shorts. Um, that's not technically where the knees may be, it was just maybe like a fold. So um, it's really your judgment, but as long as we get it to look how we want, whatever we're doing, it's pretty much okay. Uh, for an animation at least. And I'm going to keep scrolling. Uh, I'm going to keep uh, extruding this downwards, making sure that it's not coming through anywhere. Um, which at the moment it isn't, so I'm going to extrude down again. And I'm going to extrude straight down. And then I'm going to start adding in the ring loops separately. So I kind of want it to be in a little bit and out more over here and those knees do look a little bit weird they weren't really meant to be knees so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that back in just so it doesn't look so bad maybe even select the entire ring loops again and just scale the whole thing down on the shift z-axis which means it's not gonna scale on the z-axis it's gonna scale on every other axis apart from the z-axis and I'm going to pull them out of the back because obviously I press control 1 uh, then we can see that there's skin coming through here so let's just I'm not going to wireframe this time because I don't want to select the front I want to select the back only so we can see how that's done and I'm going to pull that out fix some problems and I actually think that, yeah, there's more skin coming through on the sides. And we'll see how this looks afterwards, after we've got it kind of how we want. Pull this one in, looks a little bit far out. And you can see that it's not straight, so that's quite, with the texture on there, um, it wouldn't be too bad, because obviously anyone that looks at it will see that, oh yeah, it's not straight, so it's, it's kind of a little bit more realistic. I'm going to continue selecting these areas where all the skin's poking through. 
individually because if we scale it on both sides it might not look so good for the other side but it's needed on this side. So let's see what it looks like in object mode. Still some skin. I'm going to have to change the merge limit here to get a little bit of a better uh, gap between it there. And in fact the, the reason that's happening is I'm going to have to move this upwards so that the merge happens before the subdivision surface. Um, because when it's been subdivided before it smooths off the corners. Obviously we want the corners to join together. But there we go, I think we should be about done with the actual uh, little modeling here. I'm going to turn the... But, and we still need some folds obviously, so... Um, so we're going to need to more in the bottom, definitely add more folds down the uh, in this area, and and nobody would actually notice if you didn't add any more folds higher up. Uh, but again, higher up you might want some better detail. For instance, uh, belt loops, which is why we straighten this out, and we could add another ring loop in there just for later. Maybe even scroll that on the z-axis. And then that's set up just for later on, and we can use that a bit later when we want to add in the belt loops. But we are focusing, I'm going to focus on the bottom part here, and I'm going to slowly move up uh, to where we want uh, from this point, because this part down here is probably where the most realistic part has to kind of be. Uh, it, it really depends on what kind of art style you're going for. But I'm going to do loads of folds down here. And uh, if you do actually just look at your genes, supposing that they're not a different type of gene, it's probably not that folded, but if you were going to make a game and you were going to um, add in these folds that are actually there, then you'd have to make them pretty obvious um, or non-existent because you don't want to uh, make them. If, you, if you're just doing like one fold, then you'd have to do a few folds just to make it look more realistic. And so, uh, I'm going to do this with maybe making another ring loop in here and then um, scaling that up. Mm, no, maybe not. Bring, that, bring those in from the side and then I think maybe just uh, scroll those down, uh, scale them in. And, hmm, I was kind of thinking that we should um, extrude from here, just to make that look a little bit better. But I think we should do that after we uh, do the folds. So what I'm going to do, cut tool just as before, I'm going to bring it up to that part there, and then up to there, and that's okay for the first one. And then with that, I'm going to just grab this whole area here and move it in or out and I'm going to move this one in I reckon which is going to create, if I go into object mode it's going to create a push in there so that means that we can actually probably make it look a little bit more realistic by bringing that closer to the part that's been pulled in and let's look at that in object mode again. Probably need a better light on this, but you can definitely see that that's given a, a proper curve, which is kind of how the real curves in your trousers would be. And then when they get closer to the bottom, they get a little bit less uh, curved. So I'm going to cut again from this vertex here, and I think I'll bring it down to there. And from that point, I will just maybe pull this um, maybe pull this area out um, above the curve. So let's see this ring loop here. Pull that from above the curve and then pull this one here from above the curve as well. Which means that that area that we just cut is actually lower down than the rest of it which gives us this effect of, uh, of it kind of curving off to the bottom of the gene. And I'm not going to do that all the way around, 
but as you can see from the side, that's the kind of effect we get from seeing it from the side. Do loads of them, um, obviously not too many depending on how low poly and things. But that's definitely the best way to make uh, proper folds in the bottom from what I've been doing. And they go up to the knee. I've probably got the knees here in probably a slightly wrong place. Um, but it goes up to the knee and obviously when the knee folds you can get more folds in the back of the jean as well if you want to animate them in. Uh, which is why it's good to have loads more uh, backup vertexes here if you want to do a proper animation and make it look really realistic. Um, but that kind of gets to a point where it's pointless detail. Um, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look where the actual knee is, maybe by just hiding the selection. And the actual knee is there. So I'm going to press Alt H to take that back. Uh, we can definitely see the knee is at this point between these ones here. And the actual way to make it properly uh, fold really nicely would be to just quickly maybe get to these vertex here and go Alt-M to merge them in the center. Do that all the way around. And that should be the same on both sides. Meaning that when, the, when we bend this leg now, it's gonna have a thin part in there, but this will still be smoother and round. Um, and believe me, that does make it, if you understand what I'm saying, that does make it a little bit better for your jeans. And yep, we could add more folds in here if we wanted them, but I think that, again, folds in the bottom of the jeans and then no folds higher up looks okay. Um, just texture folds. And then finally, the belt area here. And the belt area, I'm not uh, too bothered about too much detail. I don't know how um, how it's the proper way to do it is, but we could do it in a number of ways. And I think the best way would maybe be, be just to select this here. Uh, see what we can do by pressing Y to separate it. And see if that doesn't make a noticeable difference. Uh, it's only very no slightly noticeable in the light. Um, but, but that could just be a different material there or anything, so that doesn't matter. And now that I've done that, we can actually just add in ring loops, bring them close to these here, and as I said, we don't need much detail. We could either bring, just extrude it out, and then extrude it down, maybe doing this after we get rid of that, and that'll just make a quick little loop like that, which looks okay, nobody's gonna be paying too much attention. Or, uh, the way that I would probably uh, do it, because nobody's, again, looking this close at your character, is I would literally just extrude straight out uh, a certain distance. Um, and I'm going to do this once we've actually applied the subsurface modifier. So, subsurface applied, uh, mirror applied, subsurface applied. Let's see what we've got here. And I'm just going to extrude. We would do that all the way around and uh, nobody would notice if you just put the belt through that that it doesn't actually exist in 3D space because we zoomed out. You can just see that there is a little bit of detail there. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about trouser creation. Um, I don't think these are the perfect trousers. They have turned out okay and with a little bit more detail in there and uh, watching how many vertexes you use, just keeping it low, then you might want to not add the subdivision and so on. But uh, we can see that that's how, that's how this looks when it's subdivided. still works and it will definitely help as well. So thank you for watching this little part and I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, please give me feedback in the comments and so I hope I helped you out. Uh, bye for now.